Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is Dr. Bassam Hamad. We are learning process modeling and simulation in this course. Uh, welcome back. I wish all my students a very happy semester. It's going to be a bit challenging this semester as most of our lectures are going to be online. So good luck my students. So what you are going to have. First thing I just want to mention that first all lectures will be posted on we are going to have two places where we are going to post our lectures the first place that we are going to post or our lectures are going to be on Microsoft teams and I think so that I will also try to upload it on blackboard as well but I think so just having one of those uh, having only one of those platforms is good enough number two is going to be uploaded uploaded to YouTube so that's even easier so what you're going to have you're going to get a link uh, through our whatsapp group and through that link you're going to get the YouTube and of course the same link is going to be also provided in the platforms of Microsoft Teams and Blackboard so after we have this made these things clear now let's get first to our lecture so we are studying process modeling and simulation so we are talking here about process modeling and simulation and as you can recall just to recap what we have three words here the three words that we are talking about is process modeling and simulation so process we are talking about the description of a process how can we describe a process or what do we mean by a process so the thing that could come to your mind, what, what is a process? A process could be, well, cooking, uh, uh, pasta. That is a process. And of course, you know that cooking a pasta would need some kind of heating and it needs some kind of mixing. And it also needs some kind of, well, some really cutting, some uh, some bits of chicken if you want chicken pasta for example and mixing you're mixing the sauce and of course you do your reaction and a part of your action you're going to get your product at the end so what do we have here we have a process and this process that I'm trying to explain in the case of cooking a pasta it's good uh, I would say that it's something like a semi batch process in which you're going to have this pot and every time you're adding some bits and pieces and with this bits and pieces bits and pieces you are trying to get uh, you're trying to have them cooked together and then you're going to get the product of course we don't get the product output from this side what we usually get is we have the product which is inside here and we just put it in a nice plate and eat it okay so talking about uh, that so so this is a kind of a process but uh, we don't want to talk really about the processes of, of cooking here uh, we want to be more concerned about chemical engineering processes okay so that makes sense for us chemical engineering processes and what do we have in a chemical engineering process? If you go to a plant, you're going to see in a plant, uh, well, units, something that looks like that, something that looks like that. Of course, you cannot see that thing at the outside. It's just a representation that there's a catalyst within that reactor, or this is something like a separation. Or you could have a process in which you're going to have some kind of inputs and those inputs of course you're trying to just to mix them and get an output so this is like another process 
So there are many different kinds of processes you are talking here. Well, it could be a separation process in which we have both vapor and liquid, or it could be some kind of a reaction. So we have inputs here, and we're going to have reaction. So this is a kind of a reactor, and as we know, the reactor could be batch or semi-batch or a continuous reactor. In this case, uh, we are having two inputs and we are having an output. We are trying to mix between them, so this is something like a kind of a mixture. Well, it's a mixture if there is no reaction. However, if there is a reaction, then it is a reactor. That means here we say that reactor should have a reaction. So these are the kind of processes. These are the kind of processes that we have. Uh, talking or recalling about what you have taken in triple one, chain triple one, is that things are like mainly we studied them at steady state. Uh, but here we don't really want to study steady state. Uh, we are really more towards modeling. And that is the second keyword that we are trying to look at here. So we were talking about process. Now we want to talk about modeling. And this process here that we are looking at, if you want to model it in the sense that, well, what do I want to model? What exactly is important to know in these processes? And, uh, and we know it for a reason. For example, if we just have our eye first, let's, let's, let's select this example. So this is a separator. What we're having in, we're having uh, something which is in here, uh, which is a mixture of vapor and liquid, or it could not, it may not be just a mixture. Uh, we, it could be a liquid getting into a certain uh, separation unit where it hits a plate and there's some kind of a drop in pressure so you're going to have vapor and you're going to have liquid so what we're trying to say here we are trying to say that, uh, that the liquid that it gets in separates into vapor and liquid uh, very important information to know about this process is the pressure because it is uh, it is the variable that we are going to use to show uh, or we are going to use to separate vapor from liquid and of course we are talking about pressure which is related to the vapor pressure or saturated vapor pressure or another thing which is important in this separation process is a temperature so it's important to study how the temperature uh, uh, what is the temperature here because we do separate based on the boiling point temperature and because we separate based on the boiling point temperature so one of them actually uh, goes to vape as a vapor and the second component is still in the liquid phase and voila that you're separating vapor and liquid so what we're trying to say here is that we are trying to control in this process and this process we are trying to control both temperature and pressure and when we say that we are trying to control it is because that pressure is changing with time which is dp by dt and because also temperature is changing with temperature uh, with time uh, which is dt by dt we want to control it so modeling is is the write up of the model equation and the write up of the model equations these are the model equations the write up of the model equations dp by dt and dt by dt is called what is called modeling so now just to reflect exactly what we have taken in this example let's start with the next example and that example is a reactor having inputs two inputs and having an output so what's important in any reaction in re any reaction is very important to know how much a is in 
and how much B is in because we could have a ratio of A plus B to give us C. So we want exactly a stoichiometric ratio. So here we are talking about we want to control the flow rate of A. And we want to control the flow rate of B. And we also want to control the temperature that is within the reactor, which is T. And since we think that we want to control FA, FB, and T, which is temperature, it means that we want to see how does F change with time and how does temperature changes with time. And if really pressure was affecting that, that process that we have here, then we are going to say that we also want to look at how does pressure change with time as well. So, so, so what we are trying to do here, we are trying to write the modal equations again. These are the modal equations. These are my modal equations. And I'm going to write these modal equations so that I can control them later for a process. Going for the third example. So we have a mixture here. And this example of a mixture uh, well, for a mixture, there's no reaction. That means we are just trying to mix. And talking about a mix, I want a certain mix between A and B again. So, for example, if you would like to make a juice. Or, well, we love Veeam tool. I think so that was even better to write it with another font. Uh, I wish I had the font which shows the theme to in the purple color, but I, 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 I cannot see the purple color, whatever. So we know what's theme to. And Ramadan is on and it's coming so soon. And uh, if you want to good, do a good mix, we're going to add Veeam to. Let me see here. We're going to add some Veeam to. We're going to add some water. And of course, we're going to add also some kind of sugar. And adding all these three is, should be, should be within a certain uh, proportions. So these are the ingredients and these are some proportions, one to one or one to three, whatever. If I'm going to put, it, it, uh, for example, half a liter of beam, so I'm going to put two liters of water and I'm going to put uh, uh, five gla uh, two glasses or it could be less one glass of sugar you see like I, I, I can't remember the proportions so th this is what we have here this is what we have here for a mix up so what we are trying to control we are trying to control flow rates so let me write that in a, uh, another color so I'm trying to, to look at the flow rates Temperature is not really important in this process. Uh, it could be for some other mixer process, mixing processes, but not for that one. So I'm talking about only the flow rates. And, and that, that's it, that's it. Maybe someone will ask, oh no, okay. I may mix up and the flow goes up and up till it overflows. Oh my God, it's going to be overflowing. So what should I measure here? I should also should consider level and level or the height so that is dh by dt the height so the the these are the, the the model equations that we are trying to build up here the model equations so in our course what we are trying to do we are trying to write the model equations for the popular let me say the popular uh, processes the proper popular processes which could be a separator the popular processes, which could be a separator here. That is a separator. Okay, how to get rid of, of, of the small thing that appeared here? Uh, just a second, quick one, yep. So, so we are trying to control the, the, the a pro process here. So it could be the separator. So that is the separator. I'm going to, that's the separator, or it could be a reactor, or it could be one of the most popular ones, 
which is the CSTR auto mixing process. CSTR stands for continuous stirred tank reactor. So it's a continuous process, not batch. A stirred, it has a stirrer. A tank, it is a tank. And a reactor, that means it has a reaction. If it doesn't have a reaction, so it's simply a mixer, a uh, mixing process, which is a mixer. So this is what we have for to, to control. I think so I missed something here. Within a reactor, it's very important to look not only at flow rates, temperature, and pressure, but it's also important to look at the concentration. And very similar here, for anything that has reaction, anything that has reaction, we need to look at the concentration because at the end of the day, I want something which gets out here with a certain concentration. Even when I do a mixing, I want the concentration to be specific. That means if I'm going to have a juice, it could be a concentrated or it could be a very dilute orange juice. Well, it all depends on the specifications. If I want to produce a product that has concentrated or dilute, at the end of the day, it's the concentration. So you also need to know what is the concentration. So uh, these are the things that we need to study in process modeling and simulation. So the last part, the last part we are talking about here is simulation. And simulation is, is, is simply we are running these equations. We are running the model equations. Okay, so we are running the model equations where in a software, whatever it's called. So that software could be MATLAB or it could be Simulink or it could be Hisis, Aspen or it could be Minitab or it could be, it could be, it could be, it could be. Well, there are many, many, many software that you could talk about. And yeah, this is just some, some of few. I, I can't remember one which is also popular, which is also GPROMS. It's a very uh, powerful modeling uh, and simulation platform as well. Okay, so, uh, so, so these are the platforms that we have. The most popular ones that and people use MATLAB and Simulink is just one software now. And Aspen Heiser, they're just one software. And GPROMS is number three. So these are the popular ones that are very popular that you're going to use one of them in doing uh, simulation. Well, so this is what we have. Uh, this, is, this is what we have. Uh, I think so we are left with... Uh, uh, that. I, I would say that this is enough for our first lecture. And uh, going for the sec second lecture, uh, we are going to talk to explain more and more. So, so our first lecture was about what? The first lecture was just the definitions, the definitions of what is process modeling and simulation. I hope you gained a lot. And by that time, you know what we do mean by process. Processes could be different chemical engineering processes and it could be any other process. Uh, if you're talking about the biological process, it's something different. If you're talking about a breathing process, it's something different. Talking about the concentration of the oxygen, how it enters into your lungs and so on. So, so uh, the, the, every process change, it changes with time. Time is never stagnant, or it's never constant. It always changes with time. But everything changes with time. But here we are talking about what we want to concentrate on in this process that I'm trying to target. Okay, so we are trying to uh, target, of course, the chemical engineering processes, and we want to look at some kind of process variables. Process variables. So these are the process variables within my system. So either pressure, temperature, concentration, and these are the most popular ones. Uh, finally, because I mentioned the process variables, so what are the most popular process variables within any industry? Temperature, pressure, flow rate, level or height, concentration, and within concentration, you could, could mention 
many others like such as composition either in the liquid phase or the composition within the vapor phase so these are the like most popular things that you're going to see ever uh, of course there are always more but i think so it's enough for us to know that these are the main process variables that we need to know in our process thank you very much and see you in lecture two this is dr bassam al-hamad teaching change three to four thank you very much